The Galaxy M31 might look like a tiny upgrade over the Galaxy M30s, but it shows that Samsung is willing to iterate fast enough to keep up with the Chinese competition. This smartphone gets a quad camera setup and Android 10 out of the box. But is that enough for the Galaxy M series to be competitive at this price? Well, we review it to find out. Now, before we go ahead with the full review of the Galaxy M31, be sure to subscribe to the Gadgets 360 YouTube channel and click that bell icon so that you're the first to know when we have a new video. The Galaxy M31 feels comfortable to hold and its sides are slightly curved which helps with grip. It sports a 6.4 inch AMOLED display with Full HD plus resolution and Corning Gorilla Glass 3 for protection. The display has good viewing angles and is legible when outdoors. Face unlock works well too. There's a capacitive fingerprint scanner at the back which is easy to reach and unlocks the phone quickly. We had the Space Black variant for review and it picked up fingerprints and smudges very easily. On the software front, Samsung ships the new Galaxy M31 with One UI 2.0 on top of Android 10. While One UI is pretty easy to use and comes with lots of useful features, the Galaxy M31 has bloatware and some spammy notifications from first party apps such as My Galaxy. The Galaxy M31 ships with the Exynos 9611 SoC with 6GB of RAM and either 64GB of storage or 128GB of storage. The Galaxy M31 has a dedicated microSD card slot as well. Samsung has bumped up RAM on the Galaxy M31 compared to its predecessor which should give it some leverage while multitasking. We did not notice any lag or stutter while using the smartphone. The device is fairly quick to load up apps. However, big apps do take slightly longer. Since there is plenty of RAM, multitasking was a breeze. We played PUBG Mobile on the Galaxy M31 and the game defaulted to high settings with graphics set to HD and frame rate set to high. The game was playable at these settings and we did not notice any issues. After playing for 20 minutes, the device did get slightly warm to the touch. In our HD video loop test, it lasted for 22 hours and 31 minutes. With our usage, the battery lasted us for close to two days without any issues. The Galaxy M31 sports a quad camera setup at the back, and you can see the specs on the screen now. The Galaxy M31's rear camera locks focus quickly and the photos had decent details. Text at a distance was legible on zooming in. The wide-angle camera takes decent photos but we observed barrel distortion at the edges and the details weren't as good as the primary camera, which you will notice if you zoom into these photos. The Galaxy M31 is capable of separating the subject and the background when shooting close-ups, giving a natural depth effect. However, we felt that bright colors were reproduced too aggressively, resulting in a loss of detail. The macro camera takes decent shots outdoors but the quality dips when indoors. For portrait shots, edge detection is very good and the Galaxy M31 does a good job of separating the subject from the background. In low light, the Galaxy M31 takes longer to lock focus, so you will need to be patient while taking shots. Photos taken in low light look good but you can notice fine grain in the output on zooming in. Switching to night mode helps to reduce grain in the output. Now let's take a look at the front camera specs of the Galaxy M31. Selfies taken with the Galaxy M31 were decent when shot with adequate lighting around, but in low light, the quality does go down a notch and results are grainy. Video recording maxes out at 4K for the primary rear camera as well as the selfie shooter. The Galaxy M31 meters light properly when shooting during the day. However, we found that the footage wasn't well stabilized. There is a super steady mode that uses the wide angle camera and crops the frame to minimize shakes. We got well stabilized output using this mode, but the video lacked detail. And there's no stabilization at 4K. The Galaxy M31 does not feel like a completely new device, but more like an update to the Galaxy M30s. The Exynos 9611 is capable, but we wouldn't have complained if this phone had a more powerful processor 
to fend off the competition. Battery life is still the main highlight and we could easily go on for two days without needing it to be plugged in, something the competition at this price level cannot do very easily. While the upgrades make the Galaxy M31 slightly better and more versatile, it isn't a significant step up. The Redmi Note 8 Pro and the Realme X2 still offer a lot of bang for your buck. But if you don't really care about benchmarks and you want something that does the basics right and has great battery life, then the Galaxy M31 will do just fine. And that was our review of the Galaxy M31. Now what do you think about this smartphone? Let us know in the comment section down below. And as always, for all things tech, stay tuned to Gadgets360.com.